cool. Hi, Yosef. Hello, YouTube, who I met from Toastmasters. He's a very smart business person, an entrepreneur from Mexico. And he started one of the best co-working spaces in San Antonio, actually the best co-working space in San Antonio, Venture Point, which is, was really an innovative idea, um, really an amazing idea. So today we're gonna to be talking about his journey as an, as an entrepreneur, what he's learned, and how's it going today? How are you doing today, Luis? Fine, este, Joseph. How are you doing? I hope that you are doing well. And doing uh, I am very happy. And uh, thank you for inviting me to, to do this uh, chat uh, today, uh, Sunday. So let's see if we can learn something. Definitely. There's definitely a lot we can learn from you. And I wanted to ask you, because I know you've always been big into business, into entrepreneurship. What were you doing before you started VenturePoint, before you started your business? Well, obviously, because I came, I came from Mexico, uh, the first thing that I did is invest all my money here in real estate. So I was doing like, a, like maybe I can remember 14 or 15 houses that I bought here in the United States in 2004. So I was learning about uh, real estate and uh, when I lost everything, unfortunately, I, uh, I only have left $50,000. So that's where I can start another business. And uh, evidently, one of the things that I learned is that uh, what I was doing, it, it was wrong. So the concept yeah. that uh, real estate is very different between the real estate in Mexico and the real estate that we have in, in, in the United States, that may give me a bit yeah. more. So that's why I sometimes I say that I took the uh, most expensive school in real estate in the, in, in the world because it cost me half a million dollars that I lost. Half a million dollars? Half a million wow. dollars that's that I lost uh, doing the real estate in San, in, in, in San Antonio. No? Okay. So... With those $50,000, what I was uh, uh, thinking is I had to open another uh, another business. And where I have in Mexico is a direct marketing uh, agency. I was thinking to start the other again. Man. Mm -hmm. So because I was thinking to start uh, an, another of these again, mm -hmm. I was trying to find another office. So I need to start with another office and uh, personal and so on. But then I realized that it was very expensive. I mean, the spaces that I found of uh, maybe 1,000 $1, square feet, it cost me maybe $2,000 uh, of uh, rent, plus the mm -hmm. furniture, plus the staff and so on. So I was thinking in having at least $5,000 in uh, fixed expenses in those days. So mm -hmm. it was very uh, expensive for me to start another company. So I, I was thinking, well, there should be another way and I cannot believe that everybody in the United States and everybody in San Antonio has more than $50,000 to start their business. So then I was thinking, well, maybe if there is no one or there is no way to do this, maybe I need uh, to find out and maybe I can create something like that. So then I instead yeah. of looking for finding how to start my direct marketing agency. What I did was what I am not going to start a business where I can have an office for mm -hmm. a very good price and everybody can do it. Mm -hmm. So then change my, uh, my focus and I start looking for a, a, an office. Mm -hmm. And that's basically the point where I start doing venture point because I say I, I need to be able to pay the same the rent that I can afford and everybody else can do it. Yeah. Then I begin to do a, go ahead, sorry. Oh, no, no, go ahead. You were doing great. Um, I just had a question about if um, you said you were going to start it. So it was because you wanted to do like cheaper office space, not cheaper, but not as expensive affordable. to start a business, right? Not affordable, no, because I, when I find yeah. out that I was not the only one that has that problem. When I begin to yeah. make questions like uh, why you don't have an office, everybody says the same thing. Luis, it's too expensive. That was one of the reasons. The other reason is, oh, you need to find out terms of three to five years 
this year <laughs> yeah. for these men, and that was another thing that everybody doesn't want to do it. And at the same yeah. time, it's not flexible because at the end you need to have that fixed expense that you maybe don't need all the time. So yeah. that's where I came with the with the idea that maybe it should be another way. Yeah. And that's where I start looking and making a research on the in those days was the executive suites business mm-hmm. in, in, in the United States in, and in the world, because basically the executive suites and the co-working space business, the, the, those businesses start in Europe, specifically in England and specifically oh. in London, where uh, they start doing that. So yeah. that's how I start uh, Venture Point and that's what I was doing before uh, mm-hmm. Venture Point. So what was the landscape like at, like at that time in America when you were starting Venture Point in 2011? It seems like that was something that was more European and it wasn't happening as no, much well, here in the United States. Is that correct? Well, I started Venture Point in 2008. Yeah. Oh, really? Yes. In 2008 is where I opened the first one because uh, mm-hmm. the, the the part where I start find when I begin to realize that the co-working space is more uh, profitable than the executive suites became when I was doing the, the executive suites business in 2008 and 2009. Mm. But by 2009, I realized that that business was very bold. Mm. You know, there was no fun with the business because at the end yeah. of uh, every month, what I had to do is collect the rent. And mm. then by the day 10, I don't have nothing to do. So, yeah. because I am very, uh, how do you say, curious and I don't like to be quiet, and I say, well, I yeah. need to do another thing. So I have 20 days in the, in, in the month that I don't have nothing to do. So that's where I say, well, this business should make another thing. I mean, I can do anything else. I can do any, mm-hmm. something else with the business. So then I begin to, to, to make a research. And that's when I find out the co-working space that was recently recognized in Europe and where they they have this problem in Europe for the real estate that we had in 2008 at the same time. Mm-hmm. So in those days, if you remember, uh, everybody was like uh, uh, in shock for the real estate thing. And the the problems that they have in, in, in England is, is different because the real estate is different. They have uh, 10 years lease agreements or 20 years lease agreement. So the, if, if we think we have a, a rigid problem here, England is worse. Uh, so what I what I find out is that they, what they were doing is say, well, I have an office and the people begin to do, well, I am, uh, I am a direct marketing agency, for instance. So I am going to ask my lawyer that he can help me to pay the rent. So let's say that 1,000 euros and uh, well, we are, we are going to pay 50-50 and then we share the office. But then the, the lawyer say, hey, Luis, but I have a CPA that he doesn't have an office and maybe we can share with him. Ah, okay, we can, we can have the three of us and then I am going to pay $333 and you pay the same thing and then we divide it by three. But then, then the CPA yeah. say, hey, I have a, a I don't know, a, a, how you say, a friend that is a, a contractor and, and he wants to share the office with us. And then we decide to say the same thing and then we divide it. So that's the way they start doing the co-working space because at the end, it was the same office mm-hmm. in the same table and then they were in the same table. Not all the time working because, you know, the people sometimes work two hours, three hours and then they left. So, mm-hmm. But at the end, they were all of them in the same table. So that's yeah. where the we retake the co-working space, retake what we already know in these days, like they say that is like a new term, the ecosystem uh, of the entrepreneurial incubator and so on. That, that, that it, it, It's an old uh, thing, but it was like a retake it and the co-working space make it easier to understand because you know, you are in the same table with a lawyer, you are in the same table with the CPA, you are in the same table with the marketing agency and maybe with a financial guy. So when you have all of them in the same table, is where you have this ecosystem. Yeah. Ev- evidently, in Europe, because they don't have the same geography and the same 
square mirrors that we have in the United States, they had to be in all every all of them in the same office. So they they had to collaborate together more. Uh, how you say by 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 need by by need that by choice, huh? So yeah. that's where we create this. Well, we retain the ecosystem, and uh, that's where the co-working space is more strong. So yeah. that's the difference, no? The executive suites they have a different suites, and the co-working mm -hmm. space has the same uh, uh, room, and they share the table with uh, another uh, professional that they. In sometimes they have to be alike. I mean, I like uh, Joseph, and then I don't have a problem to sit with him in the same table and work two or three hours. But maybe I don't like John Smith, and then we don't invite John Smith. So it's like a, a club of friends. No? So that's basically how we started the co working space. But then I it's find it's out. At the other side of but that's when I find out that I can do more mm -hmm. because the average of the seat, it was like a two, three hours a day. So if you have a seat, then you can rent that seat to our two or three persons in the same seat. Yeah. Okay. So that's where you say, I say begin to make my math in my mind and say, okay, if I have 10 seats, then I can rent it by, by three. So I, have, I can have 30 members in my business, yeah. not only 10. So I say, well, I can do that. And that's when I opened the first uh, venture point. Mm -hmm with the idea of co-working space in medical center. That was in the medical center was the first. Okay. That so was in started, 2012. So it started as these executive suites, people in their own offices away from each yeah. other. And then you saw this idea of like creating an ecosystem of entrepreneurs and the people sharing ideas from different backgrounds, right? It yes. started that. And then you make more money too, because you can sell the same seat to like three people because they're not now working we, 20 Yes, hours. Yes, we try to do that. But yeah. at the end, honestly, we are not like that because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, when you are doing the business, you are evolving. And when yeah. I say evolving, you are changing. Mm -hmm. So we need to have, and I believe that we need to be, and each business of us, we need to have a strong personality that means a strong brand. Okay. Okay. So in that evolution of Venture Point, what we realize is that we were very good, not with the uh, uh, how you say startups companies. Yeah. We were we are doing well with the already established companies. Okay. So that's where we begin to make a difference between the co-working, typical co-working space that is incubator and so on with the already established companies. What's the difference? The difference is that the co the startups, the co-working startups, they need to have a mentor, mm -hmm. coaching, venture capital, and people that they want to consult. Okay. Okay. That's where we have an incubator and we have this kind of ecosystem. We didn't have that. So what we did is we have our own personality and we realized that we have all our clients were already established business. They don't mm -hmm. need, they don't want to be bothered about Hey, what do you need? Can I help you? And and yeah. so no, they already know what they need, and they don't. Yeah. They they just want to save money in the in the, in the office, no. Yeah. So, but at the end, it is the same thing. Mm -hmm. So we as venture point, we find out that there is uh, this already established business like uh, Joseph, like uh, uh, I can tell you that we have companies like USAA, we have a uh, several group that is a. Uh, multi-million dollar marketing agency in the United States with base yeah. in Chicago. Uh, we have Prudential. We have, uh, now we have Pre Primerica. We have uh, Apex Security Systems. And uh, we have, I mean, I can tell you that we, uh, we have FIS, Fidelity, Informa Fidelity Information Systems, no? This is one oh, nice. of the 500 este, company, no? Mm. So that's where we, we, we make a, a, a difference with, with the marketing between being a typical co-working space where you have an incubator and uh, a, a flexible office space solution yeah. that is venture point. Okay. So we are more going to the flexible thing than going to the helping the startups. Okay, to so that flexible thing. 
um, like more like it's flexible because you also have office space too, right? You have like coffee yes. and things like that. Yes. When we say flexible, we mean that you can have an office yeah. for month to month, but you don't have to pay for the whole thing of an, of an office space. Mm -hmm. You know, when we talk about office space, what we need to understand is the typical way that the people think is I need to have my 1,000 square feet. Yeah. So recently I have a client that says, Luis, I need to move out because I think I need more space. And I say, why do you think you need a, a more space? So I spend like a 30 minutes, 35 minutes with her explaining and trying to find out why they want to do that. And at the end, is she, she doesn't, is not going to leave Venture Point because what I explained her was, why do you need more space? I mean, you want to go to a space of 2,000 square feet yeah. when you are not going to use the 2,000 square feet. And she said, why not? And I said, because you are going to need storage space where you are going to have your storage facility, your, your file cabinet and so on. So those 2,000 square feet are not 2,000 square feet. You need to have a space for circulation. The people need to walk inside the company, right? And inside the space. Yeah. So that's another space that you are not using. You need to have a, a, a break room where you have the coffee, the kitchen, and so on. And yeah. you have to pay for that. Mm -hmm. So when at the end, when I, uh, I made the breakdown of all the spaces that she is going to not, she's not going to use all the time, yeah. we find out that only 30% of those 2,000 square feet are those that she's going to use, let's say, eight hours a day. Yeah. So my, the point is why you are going to pay 100% of something mm -hmm. that you are using only 30%. Yeah. So the, yeah. yeah, exactly. So the smart thing is to say, I am going to pay 30% for the 30% that I use and Every time that I use the conference room, every time that I use the coffee, every time that I use something like that, then I am going to pay for it. Yeah. That's what I call flexible. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, so getting rid of those inefficiencies and really making it so it makes sense. You're not wasting space, basically. Exactly. Yeah, very cool. And what are some lessons that you've learned in starting the business back from back in 2008? You said executive office space wasn't, you weren't into that. You wanted the flexible office space. What are some well, lessons? I mean, <laughs> there are a lot of uh, lessons. Huh? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if the one of uh, the flexible office space is going to be interesting for everybody. But I think that since the point of view of, as an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. I can, I think is more uh, 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 how engage for the people that is listening to us. Huh? I think that the, the, one of the things that I learned in the United States, it's uh, first of all, that is very different to do business in the United States than do business in Mexico. Yeah. Uh, but the other thing that I learned is obviously that the business needs to have a brand. Yeah. And the brand is built by your personal brand mm -hmm. and the brand of your business. Okay. So that means that unfortunately, what we do as a business owners has to be aligned with what you do with your business. Okay. So they are, uh, how you say, like a link what your personal brand with your business brand is. So yeah. we need to be careful that they are talking at the same, with the same language and do the same thing. Yeah. Because if you are going to be, uh, how you say, uh, uh, friendly with your clients, yeah, your business has to be the same thing. It can't be the opposite. Yeah, it can be the opposite. It can't be the opposite. Exactly. How do you say? It, may, it should be make sense, man. Yeah. That's one of the of the things okay. that I that, that, that I learned. And the, and the other thing that is maybe the most important and, and, and the people over overview, overlook, mm. uh, that part is that we need to do marketing all the time. Okay. One of the things that I learned in the United States is that we, we are in the most aggressive country in the world regarding business. 
So this is what I call the savage capitalism mm -hmm. uh, in the United States. Yes. I mean, whatever you think that you are creating, believe me, somebody else is doing it. Okay. In some part of the United States and uh, with uh, different financial plans. Mm -hmm. So because of that, the only way that you can be in front of your audience against your competition is with marketing. I don't know how or any other way you can do that. Yeah. So if you are if you if you are overlooking and over uh, seeing the marketing, mm -hmm. it's going to be a, a mistake. You so when you start yeah, a business, yeah. you need to think and you need to have some budget to do marketing. And that mod budget not necessarily should be money. It could be your time or others time. Yeah. So somebody has to run your social media channels. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can do it by yourself. It's your time. Maybe you are not paying money per se, mm -hmm. but your time to do maybe, I don't know. I know pe persons, clients that they, they, they allocate two or three hours every Sunday to do their social media. Okay, just to plan it out for the week. Exactly. They need to do marketing. I mean, if you think yeah. that you, you're, you're not going to do marketing is, I mean, how you say the Americans, you are toast. So yeah. So you got to you got to focus on marketing. What what leads to success in marketing? Because I know, like when you first started, I'm sure you learned a lot about marketing. What what's like, what led to your success in marketing and with VenturePoint? What are some things that led to success in that area? Well, I think that the, the consistency okay. is one of those. We never stop doing something until we really made this, the, the, the complete the cycle. Okay. Because that cycle, we need to find out and make the metrics. Mm -hmm. So that's why every time that somebody told me, Luis, you want to do this? Uh, Louise, I can't hear you. Let's see. Some technical difficulties. I can't hear you right now, Luis. It cut off in the middle. That's that's that's. I think that the if, if, if consistency is one of those. Okay. And be uh, how you say having a lot of uh, 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 marketing uh, uh, resources. Right? A lot of resources. Using them all. Okay. And why you seem very drawn to entrepreneurship and innovation specifically. What, what causes that? Why, why are you drawn to innovation and entrepreneurship in your life? Why is that something that you enjoy? Well, I, I like to be creative and uh, innovation because uh, honestly, that's where I have, uh, I feel passion when you are doing something like that. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I, 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 I mean, I cannot, Sometimes I cannot explain that part, but I, I feel a lot of, uh, how you say, joy uh, when I do these kind yeah. of uh, different things because it represents a challenge for myself. Mm -hmm. So, you know, to do business in the United States in another language, it was a challenge. I now, bet. to be successful in a, no, in a new industry, it's a challenge. Uh, so... Evidently, I am a person that likes those challenges and I don't say I don't want to do it. Uh, that makes my life, like I say, uh, sometimes uh, I say, do, Luis, do you drink? And, and I say, I don't drink because my life made me drunk. <laughs> so I have enough excitement with all these things that I do that, that believe me, it's like if I, I am drunk. And, and, and having this fun uh, doing what I am doing. I, I like to, to, to find the challenge and learn and read. And now, fortunately, with the videos in YouTube, it's another thing that is very helpful. Yeah. yeah. I like that you said challenges. And I like the way you describe that of like, you don't need to drink because you're drunk on life, basically. You love it so much. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. But what's a challenge that you've overcome that you're really proud of when it comes to Venture Point? What is one of those challenges where you are just extremely proud of that you overcame it or you solved it? Well, I think that the, the, basically understand the town because mm -hmm. San Antonio has their own uh, personality 
and yeah. uh, maybe venture point in another city could be uh, could grow faster that mm. we are doing now and uh, i have more than 10 years maybe like i'm trying to understand the town mm. and and but that was very challenging for me because again i am from mexico and i have a a, a cultural way of thinking meanwhile i had to adapt to what the americans what are they thinking why they think what they are thinking uh why they don't want yeah. to 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 do this if i make a research and looks like this is something that they need so it, it, it i mean it was very very challenging for me to be uh, a part of, uh, of of this culture and understand that culture and make it part of my life as well now yeah so i think that the open mind to yeah so having an open mind helped a lot let me see looks like i can't hear you right now having a little bit of technical difficulties let's see here Luis, can you hear me? There you are. You're back. Okay. Take it off for a second. No, it's all good. Um, so yeah, so a big challenge was like getting used to the culture of San Antonio and understanding it, understanding it with an open mind, how people made decisions. Um, very cool, very cool. And what are some like stories that you have from when you were starting the business? Like, I'm sure there's been ups and downs. Like, what are some stories of things that were, were interesting to you when you were starting the business to, and growing it to what it is today? Because right now it's thriving. You guys have, how many locations do you have currently? Five. Five locations currently in San Antonio. Yes. A lot of different markets being served. And so what are some interesting stories of times when you're growing the company? Well, I can tell you that maybe the uh, uh, be part of this strange mix between being a marketing agency Mexican entrepreneur and real estate yeah. uh, and technology, that mix makes a uh, venture point very different. Mm -hmm. So what I had to, to do is make under, try to understand them that they don't know exactly what we know. Yeah. And uh, because obviously I have my background, I am electronic engineer in telecommunications with master in marketing and MBA, uh, but not all the people have that. At the same time, not all the people had the experience that I had losing uh, 16 houses, half a million dollars in real estate. Wow. So when I learned real estate, where I have the marketing skills and when I have the vision, that's mm -hmm. where I think that uh, makes me at the beginning trying to say, well, everybody's going to understand it. But the, the, the challenge and the, sto the, the stories that I have is how to explain the real the realtors what i am trying to do mm -hmm. because it's very difficult to make them understand how we make money yeah because they say luis in my space you only have nine office spaces for instance in stone oak mm -hmm. how you are going to make money with that the rent is six thousand dollars so you are being in in the edge or uh, break even mm -hmm. and uh well i mean they don't see that how can I explain them uh, to a realtor that he only understand a square feet against uh, money? Yeah. You cannot explain any other thing to them. Yeah. It's like another dimension. A square feet to money. A square feet yeah. to money. So yeah. when you say, well, I have to give them coffee and uh, snacks and so on. So they say, Luis, and how many coffees are going to do per square feet? And I say, what, what kind of metric is that? I mean, yeah, that, that, that doesn't make sense in my business. No? So, yeah. and how many uh, square feet you are going to allocate uh, to be vacancy? And I say, vacancy is uh, yeah. different. So for me, well, it was challenging to explain them that my business is different. Mm -hmm. Even virtual, when I say virtual, I mean, I, I have... 12, 13 years in, in, in this business. And I, and I still know persons that when I say virtual, they don't understand even my pronunciation. Yeah, virtual, so, yeah. Virtual. yeah. They don't say, well, what, what do you say? And what that I, once that I explain them and say, I, I how you say, spell the word, they, yeah. 
they don't even understand. They say, ah, yes, it's the, you, you have virtual office. And uh, yes, I have virtual office, but I mean, why you ask that? Because that's where I make money. So it's- People pay. Pardon? So virtual office space. Oh, oh, sorry about that. Virtual office space means that people, they don't even come in. You just kind of give them an address and they pay you rent. Yeah. Uh, part of, part of, because we have one of those that is, we answer the phone call and uh, they can jump in and make having a, a, a conference room meeting. Yeah. Basically, that's, a, that's what they have and they pay $100 a month. Uh, but the, if, if, effectively, you know, virtual office is, is you can be in, your, in another place and yeah. you still have that physical address yeah. uh, where yeah. you can conduct your business because at the end, the government needs to know where you are. Yeah. So all the official entities needs to know exactly where is your address and that's where we have them. So, and that's the part that we make a lot of money, honestly. Yeah. Uh, I can tell you that maybe 50% uh, of our income is uh, executive suites, but the other 50% is built by office by the hour and the virtual office. Very so cool. th that's that's strange for them, and I, it's, that's that's as Jose, those are stories that they don't they don't understand, and we can, I mean, I can sit with them, and the other problem that I have is that sometimes they see what we are doing, like, a, oh, this is going to be the future, maybe in two thousand thirty, yeah, yeah, and uh, one of the things that I, I do now with the pandemic. Is that I say, I told them, and there is a, an article that uh, they say, are you ready to go into the gig economy? Mm -hmm. I don't know if you read some of those. Uh, there is a lot of uh, articles about the gig economy. Yeah. You know, 60% of the employees are going to be freelance and they are going to be 1099 and yeah. so on. There is a lot of, uh, how is it, guys that says that is going to happen in 2030. Yeah. So, so guess what? It's right now, 2021. No? So it, that's funny because even today you have to explain that. And I say, wow, you don't read the news, my friend. So it's uh, that's curious that that, that is happening. And, and sometimes I think it's because we need to learn and we need to keep reading about not only your business. You need to read uh, about what is happening. And uh, those uh, guys that they say, I predict this for 2030. I mean, I would like to contact them again to see what, what they are writing right now, because yeah. it's happening now. So yeah. uh, it's, that's, that's uh, how you say, uh, uh, curious that uh, that yeah. happened in, in, in my business. The other thing that I can tell you is, for instance, the landlords. Yeah. Now I am renewing contracts and they, both of them, the two leads that I already uh, uh, renew, two of them, they, 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 they already told me, Luis, I never think that you were going to renew the, the agreement. Yeah. Because they, they don't understand my business, not because they think that I am stupid, it's because they say, I don't understand what you were doing. So I, because I don't understand, I, 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 I don't have a clue what I'm doing. Yeah. It's awesome though. I kind of see it like you're taking a lot of value out of space. You're getting a lot more value out of space than most people are used to getting. Well, the, like, but yeah. the problem, the, the problem is, is, is not that space. The problem is that, and, and, and I, it's good that you made that question because one of the things that mm -hmm. we have as an entrepreneur is that we don't see our business in the future. Yeah. And we need to see the future yeah. because when it's like when you're driving a car, yeah. You are always looking to the front. You are not looking to the to the to the to the rear mirror. Yeah, you shouldn't. You need to you need to see the rear mirror as a reference. Yeah. But maybe you take that reference maybe in one second. Mm -hmm. Because you look your rear mirror for one second or two seconds and then you keep looking for the forward. So that's the way I, I describe what yeah. how could, the way you can see your business. So because you are always looking to the front into mm -hmm. the future, you should be always innovating. Yeah. And making something new because you don't know what's happening. Yeah. I mean it's, it's I mean it's, it's, it's very uh how do you say uh 
obvious that you don't know what's happening. Yeah. But the most important thing is that Go when ahead. you see that, yeah, it's something that you cannot explain, but you can feel it. And that sensation that you have is in in you is in your how say the Americans in your intuition. Gods, your intuition. Your, uh, intuition, Our is intuition is is something that you have there and you cannot explain, but you keep driving. Mm -hmm. So you you don't you cannot lose that uh, how you say momentum mm -hmm. that is, is 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 making you be in that position. Yeah. So when the people is 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 moving forward and they are doing these they 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 need to keep doing them they 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 don't they don't need to stop and think am I doing well or I am doing uh, wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do it. I mean, yeah. it's like a, I don't know if I if I say that in uh, to you, but it's like a, uh, some someday my father taught me that it's like a, the guy that how do you say trapezist in the circus, a trapeze artist. Yeah. Yes, the trap. How do you say that trapeze artist? Trapeze artist. Yeah. Trapeze artist. There is a moment they are in the in 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 in, in the how do you say stand position. And they, how you say, they they uh, release the how you say the the trapeze, yeah. and when they come back again, yeah. and then it's like a pendulum that is coming and go. Huh? But yeah. there is a moment where they had to take it mm -hmm. and go with it. Yeah. Okay. If you ask them what's the right that what explain me that moment, they can explain that. Yeah. Because they say it's just a feeling. That they say this is the moment. Yeah. Makes so sense. it's not like a, you need to wait until thirty degrees, and when you see the black thing, that yeah. that doesn't that doesn't don't overthink it, and you'll miss it. It's kind yeah, of yeah, exactly. So yeah. you just feel and you grab it. Yeah. And then they do their thing. Mm -hmm. So there is a point, and that's 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 the point that I want to make is that you need to lose that part. And then you need to flow with your with your intuition and and trust in it. What's an example of a time that you did that? What's an example of a time that you remember in your business where you did? Well, I I had to do it a lot of times. Uh, yeah. uh, for instance, when I the the first the first part was, mm -hmm. and I can I can forget that between I had the executive suites business and I started the venture point. I decided to say, well, I learned that I had to do it in American language. Mm -hmm. So I cannot market with a brand that is appealing more to the Mexicans. So then I had to hire okay. a marketing agency in the United States mm -hmm. that speak English and wants to do something for the Americans. Okay. That company charged me $10,000 to do the brand wow. for my company. Yeah. So you can imagine that I came from Mexico. I was the former president of the direct marketing agency in Mexico. So I can hire a company in Mexico that do that for less than $1,000. <laughs> I can do it easily. But the reason I do it with the American company is because I say, well, they know the Americans. Mm -hmm. They have the culture of the Americans. They understand what my business is. So those are things that is very hard that I can explain that to the Mexicans and say, do that, but appealing to the American market. Yeah. So when I write that check, is something that I do in that example. So I had to do it. Yeah. And it was a moment when I, because I signed the check and and, and, and keep working with them. Yeah. Uh, the other was when uh, I renewed the first time the lease in Venture Point in Medical, mm -hmm. I was not, uh, uh, how you say, prepared. We were break even and I had to, to, to renew the agreement. And that was a decision that we can say, we can stop mm -hmm. or we can move forward. Uh, yeah. But, Honestly, that for me, my problem was not to keep going. My problem was how I am going to, uh, uh, how you say, be, uh, because the landlord asked me for a guarantor. Yeah. Guarantor, no? How you say? 
guarantor, no? Or, or, or like guarantor? A, yeah, I'm not sure. Guarantor? Guarantor, I think. Yeah. So uh, that was my problem. So my problem was more like uh, how I am going to find a guarantor. Okay. So more than I am going to do it or not, I'm going to do it. For me, the one I am going to do it, when they told me it, this is the problem, I say I have to do it because I trust in my business and I think that I am going to be able to do it. Yeah. I don't have that problem. My problem is how I am going to make the guarantor for, that, for the landlord. So yeah. that's, that's, that, uh, that was another uh, moment where I had to make these kind of uh, decisions and I have to, to face this, uh, the, this challenge, uh, like the trapezes where I, I mean, it, it, it yeah. has to do what you have to do. No? So I, but basically every time that I open a location is almost the same thing. Right? A, a big, go ahead. Yeah. So, so a, a big part of being CEO, right, is you make tough decisions. Have you learned anything when it comes to making decisions that's made it easier or any advice for people when it comes to making decisions? Because I know part of being CEO, I'm sure, is making tough decisions. Well, for me, for me, and after 60 years old yeah. and uh, being an entrepreneur since I am 25 years old, yeah. uh, I think that the difference between today and in, in, in 1985 mm -hmm. is that I still feel fear. Mm -hmm. I still feel, how you say, a little pain in the stomach. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but nowadays, the difference is that is, is more controlled. I have more control on those emotions. I don't okay. allow them to be more important than my yeah. head. You don't put them in charge. Yeah, I don't put them in charge. That's correct, exactly. Because when you are young, sometimes you make those decisions where you put the, the emotions mm -hmm. above the, the reason. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. That's, that's very common. And after, again, no? now that I am 60 years old and uh, the difference that I'm doing a decision now and a decision in 1985, the only difference is that now I have more control in the emotions, but I still have it. So I That's still good. have feel the pain in the in the stomach, and I feel sometimes feel nervous and so on. But I you know yeah. now I can sleep. I mean, yeah. it, it yeah. doesn't matter. Now I can put that emotion before going to sleep, and I already know my mind and my my Luis Escobar, and uh, I know what to do before going to sleep in order to 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 can do it. And uh, I, I, I mean, that's that's uh, that's what I do. But uh, honestly, I still I still have those those doubts, and I still have this kind of uh, pain. Yeah. Uh, You're just better uh, at dealing with it or controlling it. So, okay, awesome. Yeah, yeah. I, I was, think it's human. Yeah, go ahead. It's human. It's, it's human to have fear. It's human to have doubts. It's mm -hmm. human to be something like that. So. We, 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 if somebody told me that they don't feel anything, I mean, it's, it's not true. I mean, honestly, or it's too right. idiot or right. too ignorant that he even doesn't recognize that. I mean, but uh, uh, because we are humans, everybody yeah. has it. Everybody has it. So the, the, the only problem is you can't control it or you cannot control. Yeah. And How there are you... people that they are more, more mature yeah. than others. Yeah. And sometimes, I mean, you can see, I can tell you that my, my brother is more mature since he was younger. Huh? I mean, at 25 years old, he already has more mature behavior than me. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's different. So. Yeah, that's awesome. How did you learn to control those emotions? Like, did that, did that just come through trial and error or practice? Or do you have any tips for that? For Well, because... Uh, one of the things is how do you say mindfulness? Is that right? Yeah, mindfulness. Yeah. O sea, be 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 understand that you are doing wrong. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing, no? So I a I made this decision, I get angry, and then I hurt the relationship. Yeah. Okay. You need to be how to say humble. Humble, yeah. You need to be humble to understand that part. To understand that you make this, uh, it it is your fault. And when you have this humble to say, okay, I make a mistake. The second part is say, how can I do better? How can I do better? 
Okay. How can I avoid to do this again? Ooh, yeah, I like that. Uh, so, so again, no. If, if you don't have the, the the first one, you are not going to have the second one. Yeah. Because the first one is recognize that you have a problem. It's like a, the how you say the drug addict, the the alcohol uh, thing. If you don't recognize that you have a problem, yeah. you are not going to fix it. Yeah. So in, in my case. I had to put my emotions. I, at the beginning, I was trying to say, no, I need to put my emotions to, to uh, how do you say, to surrender and make my emotions don't control and so on. But at the end, what I learned is that everybody has that. Yeah. Cutting off a bit. What was that? What was the last thing you said, Luis? And you have the emotions more in your in uh, how do you say uh, going out very easy yeah. uh, than a person that is more reserved. So we need to work more on how to control the emotions. So when you recognize that and you are humble to say, "I, I, I it was my mistake." I can tell you that I think I am the person that has to make more phone calls saying I'm sorry <laughs> than anybody in my life. Uh, yeah. You don't know how many persons, I mean, but I am the champion doing that. It makes you stronger, makes you better. Yeah, because you need to be, you need to, to, to recognize and sometimes it's, Luis, it's, it's, you heard me, no? Yeah. But at the same time, it's, you say, well, I, I, I am the humble here to say, I'm sorry. I mean, it, it's okay. Yeah. But this is, this is uh, something that I cannot fix, but I am here to try to do it. But, Mm-hmm. Anyway, the, but the second part is to say how I am going to avoid it. Mm-hmm. So the, the good thing about it is that I am not doing the same thing again. Yeah. Fortunately, maybe when I was 30, 40 years old, I repeat the, the situation and mm-hmm. don't recognize that. Luis, are you there? So how I, I can I can avoid this problem now? Yeah. So now I am trying to, hey, I don't want to be in that situation. So then I don't go because I know that if I go, I am going to, I it's going to trigger. You don't even put yourself in the situation. I guess yeah. you're saying, yeah, you don't, you don't make the same mistakes over and over again, which people do. Yeah. I've done it before. Um, you break yes, that because problem. you do you do something yeah that hair the people so then you say well I am not going to repeat that but it's not that you don't repeat that what you need to do is avoid to be the, to be in that situation mm-hmm. that triggered that okay don't allow that situation to come up again so let's say that I don't know maybe uh, well now I don't have a girlfriend but. Uh, when I was young and uh, I see a girl that was very, uh, how you say, uh, friendly and so on, but sometimes makes me jealous, man. Okay. So then now if I can give an advice to someone, I say, if you are jealous, don't meet and don't hang go up with a girl that is very friendly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because she is going to put you in that situation, so you are not going. You are going to be with jealous and so on, no? So you're looking at like the cause or the trigger of this, and being like, if you notice that tendency in yourself, then just get away from it. Yeah, get away of that. Yeah, that's really smart. So, I love that. <laughs> yeah, because if I know that, I can tell you here in Venture Point, if yeah. I know that a client is going to be a problem, yeah, we are maybe two or three times in our life, Mm -hmm. we need to tell them, sorry, but we we cannot give you a service. Yeah. So I know that in that moment is a very difficult conversation to say someone, I cannot have you and I don't want to have you as a client. Yeah. But it's good in the future because we know that that person is going to have to put venture point in a difficult situation. Yeah. Because there is people that is conflictive, conflicted persons. 
Yeah, or they cause conflict is kind of. Well, they can exactly they cause conflict. So, so we 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 learned that, and nowadays we I mean we have done unfortunately two or three times no more. Yeah. That we have to say, hey, we cannot give you a service. Yeah. Sorry, you know. So here's your money back or whatever, and uh, bye. Yeah. Because we know that if we go, we are with them. They are going to have us in the situation that we need to to have a problem, and we don't want that anymore. You're you're get you're like cutting you're like getting rid of all those future problems when you do that with that one conversation. Yeah, because it's going to it's going to happen. Yeah, I was going to ask. Um, you mentioned looking to the future is super important to what you do, and you know thinking about 2030, 2040. What do you think the commercial real estate world is going to be like in 2030? Well, that's or what that's, do you think your business? Good, that's a very good question because. Me as a venture point, and that's something that I try to 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 make my team and my staff have the same vision. We are just yeah. the real estate right now because there is no other other way we can conduct our business. Yeah. What does that mean? Means that if I close my eyes and I see the future, mm -hmm. the way I see venture point is that we are providing a, a space for my clients that not necessarily is going to be real estate. It could be a bubble that is floating in the air that is going to go and pick up Joseph and then travel to another office and pick up John Smith and they are in the same bubble mm. now discussing yeah. things. Wow, yeah. That means that maybe we don't need to have a, a computer, maybe we are going to have a chip in the head, yeah. and then we are going to provide the application where we can communicate with you. Okay. So at the end, what we are, we are a providers of a media where business people, they can sit together and make business. So for me, is we are using right now the real estate, because there is no other way that the business people is, can get together to make business. Interesting. But maybe in the future, we are going to see some, like a Jetsons, yeah. you know, that maybe we are going to have this kind of little, uh, how you say, uh, spaceships that yeah. they are, and they are moving, and uh, maybe we are going to provide that kind of thing. That's cool. And when you think about it, yeah. Like so, the so the point is, is, is what I want to see is we don't need to be attached to yeah. the real estate. Yeah. That is right now because we don't have another option right now. Yeah. So I am thinking right now, I can tell you eh, that I am thinking in uh, an RV doesn't be a good idea to have a, a how you say, a office space there and I can pick up my clients. Mm -hmm. I have think about it. Mm -hmm. So that's something that I have in my mind because Again, no, the problem is not, and we don't provide the space. Yeah, but we are we are a media to put two persons, two business persons together and talk about businesses. Okay, that's awesome. So it's really that's the way you see it. It's not really the real estate. The real estate is just the world we live in right now. Yeah, but I'm thinking about like a Tesla or a self-driving car. Five mm -hmm. years from now, maybe people might be able to do work in their car because they're not going to be having to drive, right? So they'll be like, oh, I'll do this. So that I could see that being an idea, like put two people in a pod together and they get somewhere and they go do get food or something and they have like a meeting while the car's driving them somewhere. Or, or like Amazon is doing right now. Yeah. Amazon with the Amazon hub and the Amazon counter, they are having Amazons all over the country mm -hmm. where you can... Yeah. Pick up things and drop off things. So the, the, the distribution channel is not only the Mercedes-Benz uh, trucks driving all over the country. Yeah. They are, at, how is it, giving approximation? Is that right? Yeah. Putting the, the, the Amazon closer to the, to, the, to the end user. Yeah. They're putting them up all over. Those yeah. little, okay. This little kiosk or uh, whatever you want to call They call hubs. You know? So... So, so it's fine. Yeah. They are doing that way. 
So yeah. maybe what we are doing, and we need to think, as venture point is again, no? I am thinking the way that uh, in that Mercedes Benz, can I have a, a how do you say, a meeting room? And then I can drive to pick up este, Joseph, and then from Joseph, I go to pick up John Smith, and uh, then I take them both to the airport. And in the meantime, you have in a meeting, and somebody's driving the van. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, why and not? Office, yeah, do you think office space? I almost see it being more like having more utility or being more like flexible, like you're saying. What? How, what do you think office space will be like in the future? Like what I have here, I'm gonna I'm gonna five year lease. <laughs> Traditional yeah. office space. It's nice. well, the landlords, the landlords, I don't know if I told you this, but one of the problems that they that right now is that the landlords and the business owners, they are having a big time trying to solve that problem. Yeah. Because one of things are, are happening. One, they realize that they don't need the, too much real estate. Mm -hmm. I have clients right now that they have what you are saying. I have a client that he has almost 20,000 square feet in downtown. And last year he has to how say, send all his uh, employees to working from home. Yeah. Now that they are back, he says, Luis, I only need three or four office spaces yeah. out of the 20,000 square feet. What are you going to do with them? Yeah. So what we are trying to find out is a way where we can market that property. Because our strong arm is the marketing and the apps, uh, the technology that we have in, uh, that we have in place. So th that is because this pandemic changed everything. So this guy doesn't do, he doesn't need it because now everybody is working from home. But there are other companies that says, well, I need a real estate, but you know something? Now I don't need this configuration. Yeah. Because the six feet, the social uh, distance, the how you say, I need to have the hygienic products. Yeah. Conversations on how to solve that problem. Um, cut off a little bit there. What was the last thing you said? It cut off for like the last part. Which part? Of where, where did you just say? Where, where the, we, the, the last part that I said is the, the, the landlords and the big companies, they are having a big conversations about what I am going to do with the real estate. Okay. The extra they space. are trying to find out a solution. I don't have the solution. They don't have the solution because it's a problem that we have now. Yeah. You have, I don't know how many, but in, in this case, with this client that he told, he has almost 20,000 square feet. Wow. That's a lot. Eight years in his agreement. Mm -hmm. Last. So now he's trying to have a solution. Yeah. It's not because he, he says, Luis, it's not that I, I cannot pay the rent. I can't pay the rent. But the problem is that I am paying something that I don't need. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't, yeah. So I say, okay, well, let me find out if we can market that property. But then when I get out of that meeting, I was thinking, wow, how many people is in this position? I mean, some in 20,000, others maybe in 5,000, others maybe in 1,000. Mm -hmm. Because they say, why, why I am I going to spend my money there? It doesn't make sense. Again, no, 30% of your least space is the one that you really use. Yeah. And you are paying 70% overhead. Every time I'm not here at the office, I'm, I'm at home, it's just wasted space. Yes, of course, because you are not using it. Yeah, and it's not like I'm renting it out to say anybody. So- <laughs> you cannot take it. Yeah. Because if you are going to it's Dallas, yeah. To see a client, you cannot take your office with you. I could see that being a thing, like maybe like in the future, it's like you can go anywhere and you have an office. You can go to New York, you have an office, you go to that's why that's why we as Venture Point, yeah, our business model is having more small locations, yeah, but all over the world. That's a smart vision. I love it. <laughs> because 
yeah. again, no, because what if if Starbucks yeah. has more than twenty one thousand locations in United States, yeah, why and and before the pandemic, Starbucks was holding between ten and fifteen business meetings in each Starbucks average. Mm -hmm. Okay, now why Venture Point cannot have one thousand locations in the whole country. So it, it, it makes completely sense. It would just be like that. Like you, like each Starbucks is pretty much the same, pretty much. Uh, yes, the, the problem again. with Starbucks is, again, Starbucks, their business is sell coffee. Yeah, but so a business- they don't, they don't want to, honestly, they don't like you to stay there for one hour or two hours only drinking one coffee. Yeah. That's something they don't like. Yeah. But at the same time, they cannot get, 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 get rid of you. That's why if you see the difference between Starbucks and the Merit Coffee, for instance, or local coffee was that ben, uh, Starbucks, they don't change the layout. They don't give it or make it more nice for you to be there. Being one Merit Coffee or local coffee, they are making it more nice to be there. They why? Must... Because they have the plugs in the table that you cannot, you don't need to bend and there are more energy where you can connect mm -hmm. and so on. They are making it more, but Starbucks say, well, I don't care yeah, because my business is not that. My business is that you pick up the coffee and leave. Yeah. And I coffee you $4. <laughs> yeah. I can totally see that. Like, I love that idea, that vision of like a subscription base. I can go anywhere in the world or anywhere in the country and I'll have an office somewhere. Yeah. Right and because they're, they are small yeah. units, then they can have everywhere. Yeah. That's the reason we are, my, the company was named Venture Point Everywhere Inc. Okay. Because we want to be everywhere. And that's the point. Because at the end, with this technology, with mm -hmm. the cell phones, everybody's going to conduct the business that way. Yeah. And you get tired of working from home. I know I did. Yeah. And when you are going to go, yeah. but when you are going to anywhere yeah, and you can hook here, this thing to a display device mm -hmm. and you can project your idea. Yeah. That's what you are making. A, you, are, you are doing an entrepreneurial uh, uh, business meeting. I, um, I want to thank you for coming on and for sharing your story of Venture Point and that vision. I really... I was really enjoying this vision. I think it's a really cool idea of just being everywhere, having an office anywhere. Um, Thank you, Joseph. No, it's a, it's a pleasure for me to talk about it and, uh, and I, uh, to have this kind of discussions too. I really like I want to congratulate you on becoming a, a US citizen. That was just recent, Thank right? Thank you. So yes. congratulations. I know that's a lot of work. It sounded like like seven years yeah, or something. And, and a lot of money. And a lot of money too. A lot of money, like... Uh, the Queen uh, song, no, that's I pay my dues time after time. That's a good song. Yeah, <laughs> you definitely paid your dues and you're here. So welcome. Yeah, Seventy-five thousand dollars. So but you're doing good stuff here in America and we love it. We love to see it. And I wanted to ask you a final question that I ask everybody. It doesn't have to be related to venture point or business or anything, but if you could leave the audience with one final important message, something that's very important to you that you'd want to say, what would that be? The final uh, statement. I think yeah, that like anything, or it could be related to venture point. But what's the one thing you'd want to say? We can make this community of San Antonio better of what it is right now. Yeah. It depends on us. It depends on each of us, right? Like Yes, of course. And the choices we make and what we do. I mean, we have a lot of things to do and uh, San Antonio has a lot of potential. Yeah. And I think that it has a lot of potential because there is a lot of people that is very creative. Mm -hmm. The problem is that we need to we need to understand that part and we need to 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 find out that we can do it better if we decide yeah. to do it. That progress. I hope to see it and we can all be that change, right? You're definitely yeah. doing with your creative works and your innovation you're doing in San Antonio. Yeah, that's something that we need. Everybody can do that. Innovation, creativity. 
think outside the box. Don't always do the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> I totally agree. Keep thinking. Yeah. Keep um, thinking. Keep thinking. Keep dreaming. I love it. I love, uh, I, I'm something. Do you know something else that I can say? Yeah. I mean, if you are not, uh, how do you say, fun enough to be with yourself, mm -hmm. nobody is going to be fun with you, eh? <laughs> I, I totally get that. I get what you're saying. <laughs> if you can have fun on your own, you're no fun around any other people. You yeah, yeah, yeah. So then you are bored with yourself and then you need to find out something outside. I mean, to be alone is fine. Yeah. No, I love that. I think that's a good message, yeah. Figure it out on your own first and then go out there and mess other people up before you mess yeah. up. <laughs> I love it. Thank you, Luis. Uh, very much enjoyed this interview with you today. And I Thank appreciate you. your time. Um, I hope you have a great, great day and I'll talk to you soon. I'll see you soon. Thank you, Joseph. Bye now. Bye-bye. See you later.